My next guest is Adam Katowski, AKA Coach Adam. He is a husband and father to four amazing children. Born and raised on the Northwest side of Chicago where he lived up until he got married. He's been a resident of Chenanahan, Illinois for- Shanahan. What was that? Shanahan. Shanahan, <laughs> Illinois for 20 years. Uh, he created the Extraordinary Me program out of a need to transform. Realizing how limited in perceptions and beliefs are and being heavily influenced by his acceptance, acceptance of others' opinions regarding his ADD and ADHD, it brought him to a critical point in his life. He created the program and has been, uh, was an intern in that very program for uh, 16 years. He's mentored many student athletes on how to be in the moment, handle their emotions, create a feeling of certainty, and permit their extraordinary selves to take over. He's coached over 1,000 students and athletes throughout the years, including his own children. Being part of the process in their transformation from youth to teenagers and then to adults, he's had the honor of working with these extraordinary mentees through the life cycles and journeys to endure. He's a certified master practitioner of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and certified hypnotist, along with holding an MBA from Math, uh, Capella University. His book, You Are Extraordinary, was published in November of 19. Welcome to the podcast, Coach Adam. Dana, thank you so much. I feel so honored to be a part of your program and podcast. Uh, thank you very, very much for inviting me. Well, thanks so much for being um, on the podcast. I um, talked with you a little bit in the pre-chat about your um, Out of the Trenches story, and uh, it was very interesting on uh, you know, how you came out of uh, the situation you explained to me and, and started the work that you're currently doing. So tell me a little bit about what happened uh, to you in your 20s. Sure, yeah, uh, 26 to be exact. And that was right after, believe it or not, it was September uh, 12th of 2001. So obviously we knew the nation was going through a, a tremendous turmoil at that time. But, you know, there was a buildup internally with me and I happened to have my second nervous breakdown and it was really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I always tell people, unless you've had that or experienced that, it's hard for you to connect and understand when somebody else is going through it. But, you know, I had these years of just build up with, um, you know, programming uh, internally. And what happened was I just was at that point. It was a critical point in my life where um, I had two little kids, all both under the age of one and uh, married and you know you go from a, a double sport athlete your whole life and then part professional for baseball into doing nothing and i think just life hit you at once and you know my, my nerves completely broke down uh, i was at a, a standstill i really couldn't go anywhere i couldn't do anything and i made the critical decision of what looking out the window in the hospital saying this is not how i want my kids to know me this mm -hmm. isn't who i am this isn't why i'm here so i had made the decision to reprogram my thinking, uh, my entire nervous system, my brain, and how I approach things, how I lived. Um, and seven days to that decision, I, I got better for seven days. And seven days to that decision of, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to change things around. I had the worst panic attack of my life. And it was, mm -hmm. I really know it was like my body and my ego kind of challenging me to say, Adam, are you serious? Because I'm going I'm to test you one last time. And uh, I remember I was completely exhausted. My wife wanted to know, hey, should we get an ambulance? What, what, what do you want us to do here? I said, just give me a minute. I got to one knee, I deep breathed. I ended up sleeping for like three hours afterwards. And when I woke up, I kind of just said, yeah, I'm serious. We're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And for about a year and a half to two years after that, Dana, I really just reprogrammed everything. And in 18 years, I haven't had one symptom of any kind since. So um, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, as we'll say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so um, inspiring to hear how you were able to reprogram, uh, work on those things yourself. There's so many youth today that are, you know, having anxiety and, and you know, increased anxiety, increased depression. And, um, you know, at times in our lives, you're around the same age as, as myself, as you mentioned your age in, in 2001. But, you know, we, we see, you know, that, um, you know, kids, you know, we've had some of these things happen to us throughout our adult life, but we, we're seeing so much happy to kids now and teens. And I think this conversation that we're having on the podcast um, will help listeners um, learn a lot about what you're doing uh, to help those kids. And talk to me a little bit about uh, what kind of books that you studied and, um, you know, kind of how you worked yourself out of that critical point. 
Well, I, I think there was a lot of, um, it was self-driven. I mean, I, I, I would, whenever I had time, it wasn't easy, but you know, you ordered books through Barnes and Noble, you ordered books online and, you know, you went to the library, you rented out books. And a lot of it was, uh, uh, personal self-help. A lot of it was spirituality. A lot of, a lot of it was NLP, neuro-linguistic programming. And then that's what kind of pulled me into getting uh, certified in that as a practitioner, master practitioner. Um, a lot of my inspirations were Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, uh, Louise Hay. You know, these are all people who had a lot of challenges themselves and did the same thing. They, they were able to reprogram their thinking, reprogram how they viewed the world. And in doing so, it, a lot of transformation took place. Um, so I uh, read, read a lot of books, did a lot of self-discovery um, on my own, did a lot of uh, practicing. And then I made the decision that uh, you know, NLP really sounded entertaining from the standpoint of, I, I think this is something that could not only benefit me, but could work with other people. So I took the uh, practitioner training in Chicago and then I met a wonderful, wonderful divine woman named Judith Delosier, who is still there today at NLP University in Santa Cruz, uh, California. And uh, she said, you know, if you want to take it to the level you want to, you, know, you need to come out to Santa Cruz where I was born, because uh, I'll be out there too. And uh, I did. I went out to Santa Cruz for a couple of weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, and I got certified as a master practitioner. And uh, that was in 2003, and I've been using it ever since. And you know, a lot of people think uh, there's a lot of stigma with NLP because uh, there's a lot with hypnosis and, 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 mm -hmm. and um, you know, techniques. But, uh, you know, NLP is very transformational. It's become a little bit more mainstream today. So a lot of people are using NLP whether they know it or not. And uh, it's a very, very, very powerful uh, influence that you can possibly use to, to work on your own beliefs, your own identity and your own mission. And I did. And once I knew the value of it and how it worked and helped me, then I started to work with other student athletes, students, parents, teachers, coaches, and um, we, 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 a lot of transformation. And, and I, I, this, what I did with myself, I, I, I do with them. It's mm -hmm. all self-discovery. I'm not going to give you the answer. There's a lot of times when I'm talking to you, I don't know what the answer is, mm -hmm. but I won't give it to you because I need you to discover that answer. Because when you do, when you get your next challenge in life, you're going to be driven to self-discover again and figure out those answers and transform and overcome it. Yeah, so interesting to hear how, um, you know, you just got involved, um, you know, working with, um, you know, reading, first of all, about NLP and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. taking the training, um, really diving deep into that. And, you know, I think, as you said, it's something many of us educators have heard about, um, but, mm -hmm. you know, we've kind of just touched the surface. And um, I think mm -hmm. uh, just having this conversation and, uh, you sharing a little bit more about how you're helping uh, students and parents uh, will help us, you know, the, myself and the listeners learn a little bit more about NLP. And, sure. Um, so you talked a little bit in the pre-chat about, um, you know, the talks that you've been giving uh, to student athletes, uh, programs that you've been um, working with schools on and, um, you know, helping uh, when those kids are emotionally breaking down. Um, you know, how is your... Uh, uh, how have your services maybe changed? Uh, what, what, what did it look like pre-COVID and what is it looking like now starting the 2021 school year and what is your vision for the future? So, uh, you know, it, it's, I, I don't think, uh, unlike uh, everyone else, it's, it's probably very similar. It's virtual. Um, you know, we do a lot of Google Class mm -hmm. uh, with Google Meet and, um, you know, I get a lot of uh, student athletes, students, teachers, parents, who join in, um, mm -hmm. we make it a great collaboration. Uh, prior to COVID, yeah, you know, I would, I, I would be able to go in and give a program, um, you know, work with the school, work with the classrooms. Um, I also donated a lot of time at the Illinois Youth Corrections Facility. Um, so you were dealing with a lot of challenged youth from, you know, ages, sadly, from ages nine to probably about 21, 22. Um, and, uh, you know, just a, a tremendous, the, the program never changed, whether I went to a school or to the Illinois Youth Corrections Facility, um, you know, you get me, you get my program and that's, you are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what it is, is just because we've made behaviors and decisions uh, that have kind of proven otherwise, uh, it doesn't mean you can't change it on a dime and, and update those decisions and update those beliefs to something more effective. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's what I really work with a lot of the students, student athletes and teachers with, you know, it started Dana. I, I remember we go years back, um, probably about 15 years ago. Uh, it started when I was, um, uh, my name kind of got out.
perform better than what they are. Can you come in and maybe sit with them at lunch and go over some stuff? I said, absolutely. You know, I'd go in and at lunch time and we'd, we'd work and, you know, foster, it's, 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 it, they, they, they question a lot of times if, if they're loved. They question a lot of times if they belong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all I did, it wasn't anything miraculous. It wasn't anything anybody else can't do as a teacher or a professional is value of themselves in themselves. And their grades were just skyrocketing, you know, because why they cared. They cared about themselves and then they cared about their performance at school. Um, we all have that ability. It wasn't, again, anything magical that I would do. It's just we all have that ability for someone to help point out the extraordinary in each other. And in doing so, that's when you get the best out of everybody that you come in contact with. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, you know, inspiring to hear how, um, you know, you're working with kids who have made those mistakes who are in a correctional facility, but giving them that inspiring message and, uh, you know, uh, telling them how they can work through this adversity and, uh, you know, work through challenges uh, due to, um, you know, uh, bad decisions in their youth. Um, you know, have you heard... Um, any some stories um, after the fact, years later, um, after you've gone to some of these correctional facilities and what's happened to some of those kids that um, you've worked with in the past? Oh, yeah. Uh, obviously, for confidentiality and identity purposes, uh, you know, we, we, we can't discuss who they are. And, yeah. But yeah, we, we, you know, they, they, they find me, uh, they contact me. And, you know, the good thing is, 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 Dana, is these kids, unfortunately, when they get to that point, um, they know they've, they've made a decision and whether it's good or bad, obviously that's society's judgment. That it's not for me to be a part of, but all I do is when I meet with them and, and when we were in there, I'd say, I don't care what you've done. I don't even want to know what you've done. Mm -hmm. I want to know where we're going from here. Who do you, you know, you've been conditioned to think you're something else and, and you clearly you're not. That's yeah. why you made the decisions. You wanted some attention. You made this decision because you were, you, something was unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. I want to know what we can help to fill that gap, to figure out who you are, why you're here. So what, when you get the point and those doors open, who do you want to be from here on out? Who, who can you influence in society, mostly yourself, mm -hmm. so you can transform and you can become who you came here to be, as opposed to what you conditioned to, to believe you were. Um, so it's, it, is, it is humbling when they do reach out to you at some point um, and they say, hey, coach, you know, I, I've done this or I'm here now. It's like, oh, awesome, great to hear. I knew you could, never a doubt in my mind, just waiting for it to happen. So, um, you know, there's a lot of fulfillment when they reach out to you and tell you how they've changed and how they've transformed and, and they're, doing, uh, they're doing what they came here to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's often those kids that have lived through those um, times or, you know, have had an experience like that. They're, they're the ones who will come and, and be those speakers, those inspiring speakers of, you know, living through adversity and, yep. um, you know, uh, connecting with students, um, you know, they're maybe in their mid twenties, late twenties now and connecting with students who are currently, um, you know, teenagers or younger. And, um, you know, when they, when they can show that they've been able to make it through that, that'll help the younger generation. Uh, we mm -hmm. talked a little bit in the pre-chat about, um, you know, the uh, professional development that you've given to schools and you said as well, uh, you're giving uh, a lot of this, uh, the trainings, uh, the sessions to parents and coaches. And um, is it all um, kind of the same type of curriculum, the Your Extraordinary Program? Or do you cater, cater it a little bit different when you're giving it to schools versus giving it to parents and coaches? Well, a lot of times, um, you know, parents and teachers will be there. Um, I, I always invite everybody. So if, if a parent you know, with the school permission, if the parent wants to attend, they're welcome to. Um, when I work into the, a lot of the athletic program facilities with travel sports and, and, and uh, competitive arenas there, um, the parents usually attend. And I usually get a lot of the parents saying to me, this really benefited me. Um, you know, I, I, kids, to me, I, I've always said this, that kids work perfectly. What happens along the way is somewhere, somehow, and I don't point fingers, they were conditioned to think otherwise. Mm -hmm. so, so my job is to help them question some of their conditioning so that they know they're extraordinary and they can overcome some of the beliefs and conditioning that they've developed along the way. And it's not here to judge. It's not here to say anything's bad or you were in a bad situation, whatever it may be. It's more of saying, okay, this is how you were conditioned and trained. This is how you develop your beliefs. I want you to question that. You know, I want you to question that because you're more than that. You just bought into this, that you're this limitation. It's not the truth. You know, we all have extraordinary capabilities that we can do extraordinary things. You know, 
Um, society, unfortunately, has created this idea of the Hollywood mystique where you have to be famous, you have to have this, um, but you don't. You know, some of the most incredible, inspiring, extraordinary people I've met in my lifetime are quiet, humble, and just inspire people to do things that very few can figure out, and yet you'll never see their name in lights. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all have this ability in us, Dana, and we just get it muddled because we, we are conditioned, we are uh, trained, um, or we are educated in a certain way that blocks it. Mm -hmm. So really the whole idea is of the program, the Extraordinary Me program, to, to, to build on the, the, the identity, uh, beliefs, and mission. Mm -hmm. You know, who are you? Mission is why are you here? And then the beliefs you have are supporting or uh, limiting. The supporting ones are obviously doing their job already. The limiting ones are the anchor. They're holding you in the harbor. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is update the ones that are limiting you to something that's more supportive. And then in doing so, then you take off like a rocket. And then you come here and you do what you are capable of doing um, with your mission. Mm -hmm. yeah, you said um, in the pre-chat that in your book, you point out how um, something that I took note of, your DNA is your DNA. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I, uh, it's, 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 it's intriguing to me mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I've been blessed with a brother who's been in the special forces, uh, retired in 2015, but was in there for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I got to meet some incredible people who served with him. And what you'll, what you'll realize is everybody's a different height, a different weight, a different look, but they're all inspiring operators they yeah. can do incredible things mm -hmm. so i tell people all the time especially when i'm working with the kids your dna is what you got from your parents you, some of you are going to be short some of you're going to be tall some of you are going to be um you know a, a little bit more heavy set some of you are going to be skinny it's just how our dna plays a part but the dna does never determines it influences but it doesn't determine mm -hmm. you your extraordinary energy your soul what you are about the the the, the the true essence of you, that's what determines you. That's what mm -hmm. defines you. So you use the DNA as your vessel. You use the DNA to get you, you know, to, to the, uh, the places that you're going, but you know, your extraordinary self, who you are, what you're about, that has no limit. That has no definition. And when you really buy into that and you know that, then you stop seeing what you see in the mirror. You stop believing that this is your, the, all, as good as you can get, your limitation, and you start accomplishing what other people can't figure out, including yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so um, great to hear how, you know, you're helping the kids um, who have those support, the limiting beliefs, and you're, you're providing mm -hmm. them with those beliefs that they can achieve great things that, um, you know, they, despite, you know, their physical, um, mm -hmm. you know, they might be, um, you know, shorter than average for a certain sport that they're playing or, you know, not be the typical um, football player, but, you know, right. it's what's, what's it up here in, in, <laughs> right. in your head, uh, rather than right. you know, your, your, your makeup, your um, genetic mm -hmm. makeup. And um, how do you recognize, how do you help kids recognize this, especially kids with ADHD? Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, you know, I'm living proof of that. Mm -hmm. I went to a, an extremely, um, I call it the Ivy League of high schools here in the Chicagoland area. Mm -hmm. uh, still very, very popular for academic excellence. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you still today, I graduated in 93. Mm -hmm. I can tell you today that I had a 3.68 cumulative GPA for four years. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. When you're in that caliber of a program, mm -hmm. for me with ADHD and has an attention span of probably uh, 35 seconds, um, for me to do that, that showed the effort and the work I put in. Now, mm -hmm. standardized tests, not so good at, uh, yeah. fully admit that. That's, that goes back to that DNA thing. Um, I just, me and standardized tests never saw eye to eye, mm -hmm. but I never use that as a crutch. I never use that as, well, I'm not effective. I can't learn. No, I can learn. I have to work harder than other people and I have to spend more time memorizing things, but I can learn. And I can also use this ADHD as a superpower. Mm -hmm. My superpower is feeling. I get a gut instinct about someone, something instantly, right? Mm -hmm. So you can use your ADHD as a superpower and you can figure out things through different vessels. Mm -hmm. um, when I work with kids, um, especially because I can connect with them on ADHD, I, I kind of teach them a lot of similar things. I teach them how to focus on feeling. 
using a feeling of confidence, we'll say. Um, you know, I teach a thing called the circle of confidence, where I have them remember a time in their life when they were, uh, they knew they could do something and they did it. Um, I don't care if it was learning how to fish for the first time, knowing that you could study a certain subject like math and you aced a test, um, you know, or you, you, you grow up and you become a mechanic and you knew you could, you could disassemble an engine and put it back together and you did. I have them go back to that time and relive like the play, the scene and take on that feeling. And as you do that, you see them light up inside. You mm -hmm. see them just come alive because they're confident. So I have them hold that feeling of confidence and then I have them take it to other areas of difficulty or challenge. And then they'll realize that that difficulty and challenge lightens up. It's not as difficult as it was before because now they're approaching it with confidence. Even though it might not, they don't have the full map or the whole plan figured out of how they're going to do or accomplish what they're doing, um, they, they do it with confidence and they're like, all right, I'll get through it. You know, I, I might uh, produce a result that, that one would call failure at first, but I'll just keep, I'll keep at it and, and, and I'll figure it out. And they do. Um, so a lot of what I teach is with, with, that's with ADHD, with, with other uh, kids who, you know, we don't know where the beliefs are. Because sometimes it mm -hmm. could be limiting a, something very simple. Um, I can't do well in geometry. Well, where did you get that from? Who taught you that? How did you come about the fact that you can't do good in geometry? What are you good at? Well, I'm brilliant in English. Well, why are you brilliant in English? What's the, how, how do you see that vision? And how do you see the vision of geometry? What, what's the difference, right? So in a lot of times you'll just see that they weren't mapping from one to the other and they weren't using the same beliefs that they could do in English to geometry. Well, let's just update that belief and see how much more effective you can get at geometry. Mm -hmm. um, so it, 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 it can be individualized, uh, but at the same time, a lot of kids, when I start working in the kids in the program, they start realizing out loud, like, oh man, I have that belief. I didn't even know that. You know, mm -hmm. look, I, I developed that when I was uh, six years old and I didn't realize it was a one-time learning. Oh. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I think just uh, myself, like I had a limiting belief. I think when I was younger, I couldn't sing because my, you know, my parents could sing very well, but, you know, I mm -hmm. really got involved in choir in high school and, you know, sung throughout my adult life, right? And, you know, I had that limiting belief, right? If, if, if somebody in your family, it's often coming from your family, if they're not good at something, well, you can't be good at it either, right? And, right, right. Um, I think, uh, you know, trying to instill in your own children, like um, things that they might be good at that maybe you weren't so good at, or, you know, um, helping them pursue their passions is always, um, you know, uh, the best thing you can do as a parent. And, I think that leads us a little bit into, um, you know, what uh, parents can do, um, parents especially who are educators, but both teachers and parents, what they can do um, to um, support students who are going through a lot of, uh, you know, trauma right now um, that, you know, it was also present before COVID, but much more so now, um, you know, because as educators, we're often the only ones, uh, you know, that can support students um, who are dealing with a lot of challenges at home. Um, and what would you what would you advise uh, those educators and especially the educators that are also parents in maybe um, you know identifying um, some of these uh, students who uh, maybe who are athletes and who uh, you know are dealing with a lot of pressures and um, uh, you know we want to be able to uh, uh, stop any um, you know attempts because often there you know there are suicide attempts that does lead to that uh, at a certain mm -hmm. point when kids are under so much pressure? Well, I have a, um, that's a great question, Dana. And, and I have a formula that I use for mm -hmm. that. It's, it's, um, it's called discouragement equals mm -hmm. adversity minus purpose. Okay. okay. Now I want you to think about this. When you get to that point of discouragement, um, every kid, every person goes through adversity at some point in their life. Um, we have a vision of the way things should turn out. I can tell you right now, there is not one person on this planet who predicted COVID back in 2019 to say that it's going to decimate um, economies, that it's going to decimate the way we do things. Um, nobody predicted this. Uh, nobody's lived through a pandemic. The last one was 108 years ago. So nobody was prepared for this. And, 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 and from the mental and emotional and uh, physical standpoints that we, we've, we've come to realize. Um, so discouragement happens when their adversity doesn't have a meaning or a purpose mm -hmm. all right so that's why i always say discouragement equals 
adversity minus purpose. Mm -hmm. What we have to do as parents, teachers, coaches, educators, is we have to help these kids discover the purpose to their adversity, mm -hmm. all right? When they know that their adversity has a purpose and a meaning, then it, they don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. They get discouraged when they don't realize that their adversity, the things they might be going through that are very tough, doesn't have a purpose. But when it does, when our role is to help them figure out that there's a why and a purpose to their adversity, then they can actually find a new hope, a new beginning, even though what they've gone through has been possibly horrific, possibly, you know, uh, traumatic. Mm -hmm. We don't know anybody's life until we've been in their shoes. And that was one of the biggest things I learned back when I had my nervous breakdown. You know, my wife, who's in the medical industry, just looked at me with four heads. She couldn't understand what I was going through. And I didn't give her fault. I didn't give her blame. Mm -hmm. But I just realized at that point, that's why I took on NLP and, and, and the coaching and mentoring role that I've gotten into is because I said, all right, now that I'm working on me, who else is out there that needs help like this? Mm -hmm. Who else is out there that is struggling, that has no voice, that um, doesn't know where to turn? And a lot of what I do, Dana, is I hope to inspire so many teachers and educators to realize they might be the only person yeah. that gives this kid purpose, that helps them discover purpose and meaning to the adversity they're going through. Mm -hmm. And if you can do it, which we should do it without judgment, if you can do it and they are free and open to talk to you mm -hmm. and are, you know, my, one of my greatest gifts is one any student or student athlete says, you know, I've never told anybody this. I love that yeah. because they're feeling that trust and confidence to know that I'm not going to judge them. I'm going to help them figure it out so they can discover the purpose to that traumatic or, or ad, ad, adverse experience they're going through. So I think that's probably uh, it, it, the biggest thing we can do as educators is realize that every kid individually probably is hiding something, is, is, mm -hmm. is going through internally something that they won't tell you, but they want to tell you. Um, so we got to figure out a way collectively and individually to, to, to help these kids discover their purpose to their adversity so they don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. um, the second answer to that question, Dana, is kids also come through us to teach us. And I have learned, I have four amazing and extraordinary kids. All of them have taught me something unique and collectively about parenting mm -hmm. that I realize more today at age 45 than I did when I, you know, was 25 and I had my mm -hmm. first kid that, um, guess what? Um, the world I grew up in no longer exists. Mm -hmm. So I can't parent my child that way. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When they have kids, I can't grandparent my yeah. grandkids the way I parented my kids because that world no longer exists. Mm -hmm. So when we realize that the past no longer exists and that world that we grew up in is no longer there, it really gives us the creative spark to say, okay, and what do I want to create? What's the dance, the, the, the connection I want to create so that this kid, this class is so inspired to discover their purpose and mission that they can update their identity and their beliefs to follow that. And they can become who they came here to be because they all do have that mission. They have, it's buried in their heart. It's there. They, they know it one day at, their, at, at age 20, at age 16 or age 34, whatever their age, they're going to realize this is what I came here to do. And then it's just going to light them up. And what can we do as educators and parents and teachers and coaches and everything to say, hey, let's help you discover that. Let's just, mm -hmm. So that you can make this place better, this world we live in better, and then it'll benefit us all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, tell me a little bit about um, some of the parents that have reached out to you um, just in the past six months as we're recording in September of 2020. Um, you know, they, they might need some extra support uh, because of, uh, just the upheaval uh, with um, kids in some states that aren't able to participate in sports. Um, I'm in Colorado and uh, we're just having, uh, I think it's golf and cross country in the fall, mm -hmm. right? And all the other mm -hmm. sports are moved to the spring. So um, are you um, being contacted by a lot of parents who just, uh, you know, they're, they're not able to support their child and finding that outlet uh, if they're usually playing football in the fall or their other sport? And, and what are you advising them, um, you know, to kind of help their child find an outlet? 
Well, and I'm, I'm so glad you used that, uh, that language outlet because for, for many, um, I would say for the vast majority of kids who participate in athletics or uh, extracurricular activities, uh, band, um, whatever it may be in school, it is an outlet. Um, it's an outlet for them to help self-discover. It's an outlet for them to release uh, energy. It's an outlet for them to re release maybe some frustration or adversity they're going through. Um, so yes, this has been very challenging uh, for these kids in particular because they haven't really had that outlet. Mm -hmm. um, this is really a, a critical time uh, where we're learning a lot of things. And, and Dana, again, I can't thank you enough for having me on because I think it's the opportunity for mm -hmm. every parent, teacher, coach to have that self-reflection in the mirror and say, what can I do to help these kids get the outlet? Mm -hmm. What can I do to help them creative, let their creative spark come out of them to realize that they matter? Mm -hmm. um, I can't give you that answer. Uh, that's one of the few things I can't do because you know what? You as an educator, you as a parent, you have to discover that internally yourself mm -hmm. to realize what motivates this kid, mm -hmm. what inspires them. When you use the language outlet, I used to think that I used to play sports too as an outlet because there was a lot of things like everything going on at home. Yeah. And um, then I realized, no, it wasn't. It wasn't, it, part of it was the outlet at first, but really what it was is I was discovering my extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I was literally letting that out, that when my extraordinary self was as best as when I was participating in sports. I was never out there to dominate anybody. I just wanted my best to come out when I performed. So that's how I practiced. That's how I competed. Mm -hmm. And kids really have that in them too. They want their extraordinary energy, their extraordinary soul to just gleam, to come out. So whether it be in a play, in a role in a play at school, or whether it be in the band, or whether it be on a football field, or baseball field, or basketball, they're letting their extraordinary out. So if you, if you realize that, which, which is true, then us as educators, whether it be a, a, a Google class or a Zoom, mm -hmm. how do we engage their extraordinary? How do we let that creative spark out? How do you see the smiles even through the cameras? Um, that's the challenge you have to think about. And it's not an easy answer, but it could be because mm -hmm. you really have to engage with the kids. You have to engage that level of energy that, 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 that a creative, that extraordinary. Um, the means are there. You know, you might be watching a movie, you might watch a documentary, you might be reading a book, and then you get a just extraordinary idea saying, oh, that's it. That's what I'm going to do with the kids. That's mm -hmm. what I'm going to get creative with and see how they can bring their extraordinary out. Um, so I think it's vital. I don't have a specific way or I don't want to give you a specific way because I think this is where the creative spark of the teachers and the administrators, mm -hmm. the coaches, teachers, parents can really find ways because it is a challenge right now. We're in Illinois, so we have a lot of restricted sports. Football is being moved to the spring, mm -hmm. uh, which has never happened in history. Um, so there's a lot of frustrated is and to answer your question, yes, I'm working with, um, I, I'm very booked right now, but I love that because I get to do what I get to do, which is help them find their extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um, but we are, you know, I, I'm very booked and, and, and I know there's a lot more kids that aren't reaching out that really need you as a mentor mm -hmm. to help them through this process. So our time right now is very vital in getting creative and finding expressive ways for them to bring out that extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Let's pivot a little bit to talk about uh, some of the stories that you feature on your podcast, uh, the Extraordinary Me podcast, and uh, kind of what got you started with that, and um, you know maybe a few guests that you've had that you'd like to highlight. Absolutely. Um, so the Extraordinary Me program podcast is very simple. It's ordinary people who choose the extraordinary, and um, you know the intent was never to have anybody quote unquote famous or. Um, you know, what have you. It really, the intent is ordinary people you meet in society who choose the extraordinary on all the things they've gone through, the adversity, mm -hmm. how they found their purpose in the adversity they went through so they never got the discouragement. They, got, they used it as fuel for something else. So my first, case, uh, first guest, Pearson Gibbis, young man at, you know, at age 17, a heck of a baseball player, gets, gets diagnosed with a very, very rare form of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, Instead of saying, why me? He used the phrase, try me. And he used this through, you know, a, a lot of the, the, the adversity he went through um, in treatments. 
And, um, you know, Pearson today is back playing college baseball. He's just an extraordinary young man. He has a phenomenal speech out there on YouTube that I highly recommend everybody watch. It's probably about six, seven minutes long. Mm -hmm. He talks about the, 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 the hardships of when he was going through chemo with some of his friends and he'd lose some of those friends. They, you know, they passed on. Um, so he holds their memories with them as he plays today. So when he questions, should I go work out today? He's like, yep, let's go. I'm not, you know, I got to keep their memories alive. And on top of that, I've got to prove that, you know, I've been given a second chance. I'm going to use this to prove, you know, the extraordinary comes out of me too. Um, another fantastic guest is um, Bailey Kachuk. Bailey uh, came to me. She was about, oh gosh, 14, 15 years old. And um, she was done with gymnastics. She did not want to participate anymore. She, you know, she was just at that tipping point. And her, her parents called me and said, hey, listen, she's a phenomenal gymnast. Um, if she wants to quit, we understand. But at the same time, we just want to know why. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked with Bailey for, for now. It's been 10 years. Uh, Bailey is a two-time national champion at Wisconsin Oshkosh. Um, she is a, a three-time All-American and she is now going, uh, taking the MCAT so she can become a psychiatrist so yeah. she can help other people because she realized when her and I worked together, her own self-discovery, that she could have thrown in the towel for various reasons and she didn't. And, and she had a lot of traumatic experience too that she shared on the podcast that I didn't even know. She didn't even share with me mm -hmm. um, when we were working. So she's overcome a lot and now, you know, she's going to become a psychiatrist. Um, the list goes on and on and on. I could talk more about the podcast. Uh, you know, I've got about 13, 14 that I've completed. Mm -hmm. um, I am shifting a little bit on the podcast. I'm going to do the Extraordinary Me Mentoring Program podcast, okay. where it's going to be probably every week or every two weeks. It's just going to be me. And I'm going to go over a lot of the things that I do in coaching, a lot of the things I do in mentoring, and a lot of things I do in working with kids individually. And the purpose behind that is to, to help kids throughout the country um, listen to this podcast and obviously it's going to be free um, so that they can get that coaching and mentoring that I've worked with so many other kids on so that if there's a kid out there who's, who's, you know, on social media or really needs some advice or really needs some self-discovery so that they don't throw in the towel so that they're not, uh, you know, they're not thinking about quitting. Um, you know, I want that valuable knowledge to be there so that they can use that and as an exploration on how they can self-discover answers and they can be the extraordinary me that they truly are, not what society has conditioned them to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll be uh, putting the link to the podcast in the show notes. And you know, I think that's uh, something that uh, definitely want to get out there for those, uh, you know, high schoolers and any of those young people who, um, you know, need to hear uh, your message. Um, since um, you're not, you know, going to schools and you know you're working with some schools virtually, but you know, getting the word out there through the podcast is a great idea. Uh, you also, um, you know, we, we talked a little bit in the, the bio about your book that you published last year, but you're also working on a new book, um, Extraordinarily ADHD. Uh, tell me a little bit about that book and, and when you plan to have that out. Sure. It's, um, it's a, I, I think we're going to call it, it hasn't been officially titled yet, but wow. I think it's going to be my, my Extraordinary ADHD. Um, and really what it is, Dana, is it's a book um, about being a kid with ADHD and going into adulthood with it, but it's a simple read. It's one chapter is a page, um, and it's going to be something that kids who have ADHD can connect to so they don't feel uh, out like an outsider. Um, you know, my whole life growing up, they didn't have what they have today for ADHD, mm -hmm. and there's so many extraordinary and amazing people who are bringing light and bringing awareness uh, to this. Um, uh, the, the silent um, challenge. But, you know, I, again, I always chose to look at it as a superpower. I always chose to look at it as the extraordinary opportunity to learn in a unique and advanced way. And um, when I write this book and it's finally published, it's going to be able, it's going to be very simple read and it's going to be very inexpensive because of, I want the kids who have ADHD to read this to know that number one, they're not alone. Um, I've been in your shoes, I'm still in your shoes, but you can use this as a transformational tool mm -hmm. to be extraordinary and it, teach people, you know, one of my greatest uh, feelings that I get is for people to say, wow, you taught me something I never knew. And I go back in time and I think of every teacher who told my parents, you know, Adam just can't learn. He's an ineffective learner. He's just not going to do well in school. Um, yes, I can learn. And yes, I'm willing to learn. And more importantly, I'm willing to teach others how to learn. 
Um, and that's what I think a lot of the motivation and inspiration to write my extraordinary ADHD uh, came from. And I'm hoping within the next two months to have that published. Um, we're getting towards, you know, it's a marathon. So you got mile 26. We're probably at about mile 23 or 24. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, we can feel it. You know, we can feel the, the terrain. But at the same time, we can feel the fact that that finish line is coming up on us. So, um, you know, I'm excited. I, 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 I can't wait for that to come out. And I can't wait for kids to connect to that mm-hmm. so that they feel they can use their ADHD instead of being downplayed. They can use it as an opportunity to, to teach others uh, what, they can in a creative way. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll definitely, um, you know, get that out. Um, if this public, this podcast is being published after the book's out, we'll definitely get a link to that in the show notes as well. Out of everything we discussed today on the podcast, what's one thing in particular you'd like listeners to remember? Um, I would really, I'd say it's twofold, Dana. Um, I would say, number one, to every student, student athlete out there, every person listening, you are extraordinary. Um, don't let difficult times define you. Yeah. Let the, let the purpose of these diff- difficult times define how you created your character to overcome and transform these, these challenges. Um, you all are going to be challenged with something or some things. Don't let it define you. Don't let it um, dictate your life and keep you anchored. Um, Let it go. Learn from it. Transform from it. And then go help others. Because Mm -hmm. that's what you can do is once you've been through the mud, you can teach others how to get out of the mud themselves instead of judging them, which is what a society does many times. And the second part of that is to the parents, teachers, and coaches, your role, particularly right now in history, is so vital, Mm -hmm. so important. Um, That's why I'm honored through the uh, social media's outlets to to connect with so many educators and so many um, professionals and administrators in education, because I really want them to feel extraordinary because I want them to pass it on to their students and their student athletes. our job is to really guide these kids. They have the answers. It's to get them out of their own way so that they can realize why they're here and who they are and what they're capable of and not to inhibit them or block them. And on top of that, our, our, our role is to make this world a better place. So by doing what I just said, by, by letting them teach us, by letting them um, experience the extraordinary and overcome their challenges or limits and things they're going through, they will do that. And they're going to make, you know, it might not happen today. It might not happen tomorrow, but in some generation, this world is going to transform because of the work that you do Mm -hmm. and that you bring. That's why you're so important. That's why you're so vital. And that's why you're so extraordinary. Great. I think that's, uh, those are definitely uh, words that, um, you know, it's, we can ponder as, as uh, we sign off here. And um, you know, those words for us uh, educators and parents, especially that, uh, you know, the, these kids today, they're going to change the world. I mean, we have a lot of things with climate change and, and political unrest. And, uh, you know, we know that, um, you know, more than ever now, they, they, they have the capacity to change the world. But a lot of time it is, you know, speaking that life into them and speaking those, uh, those words of encouragement. Um, so I want to thank you so much for being on the Out of the Trenches podcast. Where can people find you online? Uh, well, th- Dana, first, thank you so much. I'm so honored to know you. I'm so honored to be a part of uh, your podcast and your program. And, and thank you for, for continually bringing extraordinary people on your program because you're doing a wonderful, wonderful thing by educating educators and uh, people around the world. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, very easy. It's www.coachadam34.com. Uh, that has all my social media outlet um uh, uh, connections. It has all my contact information. Um, I have links to the podcast. I have links to my YouTube channel. I have links to um, the the mentoring program. So uh, coachadam34.com. It gives you literally everything you need to know possibly or more about me. Um, and I, you know, I'd love to connect with you and I'd love to reach out. If anybody wants to reach out, I'm pretty open book. You get pretty easy to find uh, contact with me and we'll, I'd love to connect. Great. Well, I've had such a pleasure today uh, finding out more about the Extraordinary Me program. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Dana. You also.